So, here we are, later in the afternoon. Isn't the sun great? Uh, phenomenal. I'd like to talk about Paro and what we mentioned in the previous clip, how the Nitziv tells us that Paro is not being punished anymore for what he does after Hashem begins to harden his heart, but rather he is already being punished at this point, the hardening of the heart and the consequences of that hardening are the punishment. The punishment is for what he did previously, that he ignored God's demands. Let's see inside. We are in the book of Exodus. The reading of the week is Bo, and we are chapter 10, verse 3. So Moses and Aaron come to Paro, and they say to him, Such thusly has said God, the Lord of the Jews, until when will you refuse to humble yourself in front of me? Send out my nation, and they will serve me. Because if you refuse, and continue to refuse to send out my people, then tomorrow... I'm going to bring upon you a plague of locusts. And now they go on to describe in detail what this plague is going to look like and what it's going to do, the consequences of the plague. And this plague of locusts will cover the land. The land will be not visible because of the layer of locusts. You will not be able to see the land because of them. And these locusts will consume everything that was saved. You think you had a little bit of something left after the barad, and you felt safe, you thought that you were okay because there's still food left, well, guess what? They're going to come, and they're going to eat everything. And the new growth, the trees that were broken, so the new shoots, the new branches that are just starting to grow out of the broken stumps, the locusts are going to come, and they're going to eat that also. And these locusts, they will fill your houses. They will fill the houses of your servants. They will fill the houses of all of Egypt your fathers and your grandfathers from the day that Egypt was founded have never seen anything like this. And they turned and they left Paro, Moses and Aaron. So let me ask you, do you think for a minute that Paro had a doubt in his mind, any doubt whatsoever, that this was actually going to happen? He knows. Every fiber of his being knows that this is going to happen. The horror of it must, uh, thousands of years later, just thinking about it, is a horror enough. And they knew what locusts were. We've seen it maybe on TV, but they lived it. There were plagues of locusts regularly. So he knew exactly what was going on. And it says that God hardens his heart, and he ignores, again, Moses, not because he doesn't know what's going to happen, but because he's addicted, he can't control himself anymore. The reason 
that God begins to harden his heart is because of the law of a Lashalchem. It says he did not want to send them out. Like I said previously, the plagues wiped out his free will. He had to do it against his will. God's hardening his heart only gives him back his reserve. Sounds awful like an addict, doesn't it? Someone who knows the consequences, really, in his heart of hearts, but chooses to deny it, chooses to ignore it, and suffer those consequences over and over and over again. Finally, the wise men, Vayom Rav de Paro Elav, Ad Masayi Eze Lomu Lamoke, Shalach Es Anashim, Vayavdu Es Adoyna Eloheim, Materem Teido Ki Avdo Mitzrayim. So his servants, seemingly in a bout of conscience, but really not, if you pay attention to the words, they also say, we're not going to give him what he wants. It's everybody, only the men, and only for the reason of, don't you know, Aterem Teda, don't you know yet, that Egypt is lost, Egypt is destroyed? The consequences are overwhelming. Do something. Negotiate. But you shove as Moshe be as Aaron el Paro by Yomer elehem lechu ibdu as Adonai elohechem mi v'mi haholchim. So they brought Moses and Aaron back in front of Paro, and it's not clear whether it's Paro who's talking or whether it is the people, his servants, talking. By Yomer elehem, it just says, "Go and worship your God." I give in. Okay, now who's going? And Moses answers, So Moses says, we're going. The whole nation, our young people, our old people are going to go. Our sons, our daughters, our flocks, sheep, cows, everything. We're all going. Because it's a Chag, and we need everything. Everything that God gives us is for his service, so we have absolutely no idea what it is we're going to need. So they said to them, this is how it should be. This is how God told you. This is how God is with you that I should send you out with your children. They're going to die in the desert. Who's going to feed them? How are you going to get them to the desert? You're not, what are you taking the children? He says, nah, just the men. Take the men, that's what you really want. Deal is over, go, get out. And let the men go. So, did Pyro think that it was going to work? Did Pyro not understand that even his servants, who had a, a, a smidgen of regret, at least for self preservation purposes, but when it comes down to it, the nitty gritty, the red line that the attic draws, very quickly is erased, and the consequences are quick to come. But at the moment, he can live in denial. Sad. Addiction is very sad.